Hey, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, I am Joshua Santora, and I'm coming to you live from the Kennedy Space Center, sort of. Uh, that's my traditional work environment, but obviously with the state of things, I'm at home working like most of America, working like most of the agency, uh, trying to stay busy, certainly busy putting on things like this. Glad you could join us. Today we have a very special treat. Uh, we're going to be talking about one of NASA's treasures. Uh, this is the mobile launcher, NASA's mobile launcher. Um, there on the top left, you can see in the distance, Launch Complex 39B. We'll talk more about that today. And then the mobile launcher on the right-hand side, uh, a massive, literally massive, massive structure uh, that we are going to be launching the next the, NASA's next deep, sp deep space rocket uh, into orbit. Um, and to do that, we have a, an expert here joining us in just a few minutes, uh, but wanted to call attention to the fact that uh, as we talk about the Spaceport series, we're looking at the Kennedy Space Center and the Kennedy uh, Spaceport, as I love to affectionately call it. Um, and specifically, we're looking at uh, exploration ground systems today. Uh, so we're talking about EGS, as we love to call it. Uh, they're working on developing the infrastructure to launch the world's most powerful rocket. Um, so we are super excited for that. And let me go ahead and welcome in now my very special guest. Uh, this is... Uh, Cliff, uh, let me make sure I get this right, Lanham. Cliff, how are you today? Doing well, Josh, thanks. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us. Obviously, you two um, are not at the Space Center. You are at, at home working, so appreciate you joining us. Um, glad to have you on board. Thanks, Josh. Good to be here, and uh, hopefully I can uh, give some people some insight on the mobile launcher. Yeah, and as we talk today, um, obviously your title there, Senior, senior Project Manager, um, so a very big deal. Um, I want to also call out, hey, feel free to shoot us questions in the chat window. Feel free to shoot us questions using the hashtag, na excuse me, hashtag NASA at home. Um, and so lots of opportunity there to engage with us. Please continue to do that over not only this time, but also more. Let's jump right in, Cliff. Uh, so as part of NASA's Artemis program, hopefully everyone's heard of the Artemis program. It's how we're sending the next, or excuse me, the first woman and next man to the moon and that Launch Complex 39B and Mobile Launcher are, are critical to that. So can you tell me more about what is this huge undertaking? Sure, uh, Josh. So the Mobile Launcher is um, the primary uh, structural uh, element that the rocket is actually assembled on. So um, essentially the Mobile Launcher will be in the uh, Vehicle Assembly Building in uh, High Bay 3 of that building. And then uh, essentially uh, gets connected up to the vehicle assembly building, and then we start stacking the rocket on the mobile launcher uh, base. Uh, essentially, the boosters get stacked, followed by the core stage, the uh, upper stage, and then the Orion service module uh, will get stacked as well. Um, essentially, the mobile launcher, so from the, as far as the mobile launcher and building it, um, just to kind of give people a feel for how big it is, uh, basically, it's um, almost 400 feet from the ground to the top. Uh, the base itself is two levels um, deep. Um, it's roughly the size uh, surface area of what you would a uh, baseball infield, a major league baseball infield, kind of give you some perspective there. Um, 153 feet by 133 feet. Um, basically, it weighs um, 10.5 million pounds. Um, the so, tower so, itself so, is 345 so, feet. Cliff, I want to jump uh, in there the because base. I think you just—I think you just said what I heard you just say was ten and a half million pounds. Is that—is that a correct number? That is a correct number, and uh, it's a lot of steel making up the mobile launcher. For I sure. mean, that's, that's incredible. So ultimately, we we say it's a mobile launcher, and I want people to appreciate that—that that it's not something that you build in place. It's one thing to build something in place that's ten million pounds. It's a whole different game to build something right. ten million pounds that you move. That's correct. Um, where I like the kind of analogy of it, we built a skyscraper that we are able to move around and uh, launch a rocket from. So uh, it's it's a it's a massive structure. Um, it's taken a while to get it built. Um, it's very complex. Um, that's what I always like to tell people is the uh, the technology is not off the charts. You know, mind bending like maybe some of the spacecraft going out to Mars and all. Sure. But the complexity of the systems and trying to make them all work together is off the chart. Yeah, so currently I know we're targeting a 2021 time um, for our first launch of the Artemis program, which will use that mobile launcher. So thinking about that, um, obviously 
we're looking at about a year out. So where are we in the process? We've been here for years kind of developing and getting ready. Um, so, so what's the big picture timeline wise? So uh, let me go back just to, for a second. I'll go back in time a little bit. So the original mobile launch, this mobile launcher was originally built for the Constellation program, which is going to take astronauts into low Earth orbit and ultimately to the moon. Um, so it was a much smaller rocket than the uh, SLS, Orion will be. Um, so what we did was we had to go and modify the mobile launcher. And what we did, we tripled the size of the flame hole because now we have two boosters and a core stage with four engines on it um, within that you know, area of the flame hole. So we had to do that. That was a, a single contract. Um, and then we just, now the contract we're currently wrapping up um, at this time is the ground support equipment contract. So all the ground support equipment is what's there to support and provide your commodities, your services, your power, your fuels to the rocket. Uh, there's mechanical systems that would be, you know, uh, on there. They would include the umbilicals, um, that type of stuff. Uh, then you got the electrical systems, which would have power, instrumentation, uh, the ground control system, and COM, which could be cameras and communications um, cables. Um, there's also fluid systems. So the fluid systems would include your uh, cryogenic fuels, your liquid oxygen, your liquid hydrogen, all flow through the umbilical, uh, tail service mass umbilical to the rocket. Um, so it's a lot of systems going in. Um, then we had to interconnect all those systems. So essentially, we had close to 5,000 cables that you know have to spider web their way and connect bubbles. We have tubing that runs everywhere on the mobile launcher. I don't even know how many miles to even uh, quantify that, but there's miles and miles of tubing uh, connecting all these systems together. And then there's pipe that connects the cryo systems all together. So um, it was a it's a massive undertaking. Um, we are 99.9% .9 there. Um, currently, we're finishing up some structural modifications to a major truss that supports uh, the tower, the weight of the tower, um, and the rocket, but it's a major truss. Um, we found we had to uh, go and reinforce that, so we're wrapping that up now. Uh, we're also, um, we found we had some corrosion on some of our fire detection uh, system, and uh, you know it's a very important system for the safety of the workers, the crew, everybody, so fire detection, we're wrapping that up as well. And then uh, we finished up our uh, verification and validation testing, but there were a few non-conformances, we call them, or you know, issues with testing. Sure. And we're uh, sure. wrapping up a couple of systems that had a few problems. And um, so we're wrapping things up um, and getting ready for operation. Man, so I, it's impressive just thinking about that. As you talk about like 5,000 cables, you just kind of listed off, like laundry list these systems. And I think it's easy again to kind of overlook the complexity of this of, you have something on the order of a 32 story tall building that you're running 5,000 cables through. Um, and uh, kind of along those same lines, kind of just the complexity and the magnitude here, we did have a social question come in here. How do you weigh the mobile launcher? Because ultimately like, is there a, is there a point to where like, we're kind of guessing like we're pretty, we know it's pretty close because of the steel we're putting on it, or do we actually weigh this thing somehow? No, we actually weigh it. Um, so there's a couple ways we weigh it. Um, first, the crawler transporter, which is actually the tractor, if you will, that picks up the mobile launcher and moves it from the VAB to the pad. Um, so that that has instrumentation that allows us to weigh it when it picks up the mobile launcher. And then there you see it in the video um, underneath the ML. Um, and then also the, um, the support mounts at the pad and in the VAB have instrumentation on them that allow us to get the weight of the mobile launcher as well. So again, even that requiring just uh, some incredibly complex equipment um, you can't just use your bathroom scale to go away a mobile launcher, which is awesome. Um, and I'm assuming that it takes something of a small army to create this uh, because you kind of, again, it's a 32 story tall building. That's a engineering marvel in a sense, because you have all these systems integrated into it. Can you spitball me? Like how many teams are we talking? How many people are working on this? Wow. Uh, that, that's a, that's a good one. Um, so at, Different times, there's different types of people and different teams. So in the design and development phase, which um, again, we're pretty much done, it had teams for all the different systems. So there was over 40 ground support equipment systems, uh, rattled off a couple earlier. Um, those systems each had teams, you know, teams to provide analysis, uh, design for those teams, project management for those teams, 
Uh, so they had teams individually, and there was overlap in the people. Some people had more than one uh, system to work. Sure. So there were, sure. you know, there was some of that. Um, from a construction standpoint, um, JP Donovan was our uh, main contractor, and with five subcontractors helping him do the ground, installing all this equipment and all this cabling. And at times, they were up around 300 uh, workers, um, actually out on the mobile launcher, welding, putting in cables, testing cables, uh, putting cryo systems in, so up around 300. Now, as we transition towards operations and into operations, um, Jacobs, our operations contractor, you know, they have people out there doing operations and maintenance on all these systems now. Um, they're doing testing, they're uh, doing the flow management, the operations management of who's doing what, because we're now into more of an operational, um, you know, transitioning into that operational phase. So I, I couldn't hazard a guess other than at times it's probably going to be, you know, when we're actually stepping the rocket, I would assume we're going to be in the thousand you know, range. Um, we've been at many, many hundreds at times uh, sure. when we were out at the park site building the mobile launcher and in the VAB testing. Yeah, and, and you, you mentioned a really good point there yeah. about yeah. the idea of operations. And I don't want people to take that for granted. Again, so much of this is kind of putting things in context um, because we've been working on the development of this for years. And then you're going to take a workforce and kind of move towards operations as we start to see hardware come in as early as the summer. Um, there's even some pieces that are on center now. So as we move forward, um, w what's that like for that team to kind of, kind of shake off like the, okay, we've designed it. Now we have to go use it to fly a rocket. Right. So what I would say is we started this transition to operations uh, a couple of years ago, actually, in, in essence, in trying to get the teams um, ready for when we hit this point in time and actually operating the system. So we were doing testing out at the park site, which is our construction area uh, on the mobile launcher. And the operations um, test teams would come out and do some small, minor individual testing. Um, as we went out to the pad and the VAB to do our multi-element verification and validation testing, you know, which is essentially our testing that we did for score against our requirements, uh, those teams increased and they started getting more and more involved in actually performing the test, which allowed them to uh, run their procedures, allowed them to get training on the systems, to learn the system. So now as we transition, once we return from the pad back in December, from our multi-element testing and uh, have declared that complete, um, we went into, um, we kind of flipped the switch as a program and went to operations. Now we have a flow manager who um, and his team basically integrates, it's much more highly integrated uh, in terms of everybody's work. Uh, when we were in development, you know, the project teams, the mobile launcher, the VAB, you know, kind of off doing their uh, construction and kind of managing their areas. Now we're all highly integrated. It's going into a schedule. It, it defines, um, you know, hazardous areas, the hazardous testing. Uh, everybody can kind of now, you know, needs to be integrated. And uh, so that's where we're headed. And, you know, procedurally, everything's controlled procedurally as we uh, do our work. Awesome. So uh, we're about out of time for today, Cliff, but I wanted to ask you as we get towards launch, what is, um, what's going to be your role? Obviously, you've kind of been working on the project management side for getting this thing ready. Um, and as we transition to operations, uh, where are you going to be when we're talking about launch day? What are you going to be kind of feeling and experiencing as we, as we near a, a huge milestone for NASA? Uh, good question. Um, I'll go wherever they send me, but, uh, <laughs> so right now, right now I'm, uh, I'm supporting as the, uh, you know, as the de deputy to the project management division chief, um, so just because we're entering operations doesn't mean the uh, construction and the project uh, side of the um, program ends. You know, we have modifications to do to the uh, mobile launcher to add, add an emergency egress system for the Artemis II mission when we fly crew. So uh, there's work there. You know, Got to go through the whole design development process there. Um, we're also um, putting environmental control systems at the pad and in the VAB, new systems. Um, so they're big projects. So um, there's plenty for me to do, uh, supporting my boss in all the project management areas, and um, we'll, we'll keep on doing that. So once we launch, you know, we go right back into some uh, project development. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a relentless cycle that we'll be in. Cool. Well, Cliff, it sounds like you're having fun. Um, appreciate you joining us tonight. 
and I wish you the best going forward, and I am just so excited to see this thing fly someday very soon. Uh, me too, and I can't wait. See All right, Cliff. Thank you. Take it easy. All right, so I want to transition really fast now to some uh, some current events, things that are going on. I um, want to make sure that you are aware uh, that we have a great resource available, nasa.gov slash nasa at home, especially if you've got kids or if you just want some entertainment in general, by all means, you are welcome to check that out. Um, it's, again, a great space to find all sorts of cool things. I wanted to highlight a couple of those things for you right now. Uh, we have the, uh, we'll go here first. Uh, this is the home page for nasa at nasa.gov slash nasa at home. So those big tiles there leading you on to con kind of some specifics. And then even more specifically uh, today, I wanted to highlight for you the STEM at home section, um, which is a really great resource for students of all ages to kind of learn things, have fun, engage with NASA missions and activities. And um, yeah, just a great experience, um, great resource available. Uh, also wanted to call out some uh, some interesting social media activities this week, um, this weekend actually. So things are just moving so fast all the time. Um, we have this one, which is a great example of kind of this planning happening uh, as, as we proceed. We, we're moving at an incredible rate. So excited to be able to share this this past week. Uh, this is the plan leading to our, our understanding and of what we're planning to do for the moon and, the, and going to Mars after we're done with the moon or as we, as we master the moon, so to speak. Uh, so we're not just going for a short trip to the moon. We want a sustainable presence. We're saying 2024, we want boots on the moon. 2028 is a, a sustainable presence. And that's with Mars, uh, our eyes towards Mars. And so that's what this is about, looking ahead towards Mars and laying out this roadmap for us for the future. Um, also another great highlight, Mars 2020 also named Perseverance, super excited about that. Um, there's actually this really cool thing happening where we're sending up almost 11 million names of people um, that will be going on board this uh, chip here, this plate, that will be going to Mars. So this rover is getting ready for launch in July and they'll be taking this up to um, uh, on board Atlas V to launch the summer all the way to Mars. And then just released this afternoon, some really cool imagery of uh, a, an emergency egress test that was done for SpaceX as a part of the commercial crew program. Um, essentially, this is working through the process of if there's a bad day at the launch pad, how do we know that our crew can get out safely? And so they ran an end-to-end -end test, basically from the top of the tower down to the ground and away from the launch pad to safety. Um, so really, really cool kind of experience there. Um, definitely be sure to check that out. Check out all of our social media online. There's so much going on. I uh, want to also make sure that I plug the... Uh, nasa.gov slash EGS. That's where Cliff works, the exploration ground systems. Appreciate all their hard work getting ready for Artemis. Um, a ton to look at on nasa.gov in general, but that is going to do it for me tonight. Uh, I wish you all the best. Be safe, stay healthy, and remember, even the sky isn't the limit. Have a good night.